For thousands of years, Aboriginal peoples have used drums to call on healing spirits. But the sound of the drum itself can be a source of renewal. The repetitive beat can induce a meditative state, which may actually have healing properties. Today, a new generation beats the drum to heal body and spirit. These young men are from the Tiwa tribe of northern New Mexico. Like their ancestors before them, they chant and drum in a rhythmic appeal to heal. To make a healing drum, they start with pieces of pine or spruce, soft woods that are lightweight. The native craftsman creates an octagonal design and leaves the glued joints to dry. The next craftsman soaks a cowhide in water to make it soft and pliable. He drapes the wet hide over a drum frame, and as he does, he looks for cuts or thin patches. He arranges it so that any flaws aren't apparent. He then trims the hide. This particular drum is for powwows, so it's extra large. It's a two-sided version for a deeper tone. He pulls the wet hide to the desired tension and punches holes in the skirting. He hammers nails through the holes to tack the hide to the frame and cuts a scalloped edge. He then tacks a hide to the other side. He places another piece of wet rawhide on a spiraled blade and pounds the hide into it using a hickory mallet. This slices the leather into a long, thin lace. He extracts the lace from the cutter. After softening it with water, he takes it outside. He wraps one end around a post and pulls, stretching the leather to remove slack. It breaks at any weak points, leaving the strongest parts. He now laces the leather drum heads to the frame. He cuts a slit in the end and pulls the rest of the lace through the slit to knot it to the drum head. He zigzags the lacing through alternate holes in the two drum head hides. He tugs the lace as he goes to pull the leather drum heads tightly to the frame. Once complete, he knots the other end. He threads the second piece of lace through the remaining holes, creating a crisscross pattern. Paint applied to the frame early on shows through the crisscross weave. The leather dries to a dark patina for a stunning contrast to the blue hue. This double-sided drum is now ready for a powwow. To make a single-sided healing drum, they bend a piece of wood into a complete circle. A craftsperson signs and stamps the maker's information on the inside. Then it's over to the drum maker. She pulls a wet hide to the wooden hoop and folds it under the rim, smoothing out any puckers. She punches holes for securing the drum head to the wooden hoop and slices off the excess hide. She's now ready to lace the drum head to the frame. She ties the skin to the frame in a configuration that looks like the spokes of a bicycle wheel. She pulls it tightly for the desired tonality. It's all in the technique. If she doesn't get it right now, the wet drum head will warp as it dries. The leather spokes meet at the center in a cross where the drummer will grip it. The leather darkens as it dries and the tension sets. She now weaves strips of tanned leather around the cross at the center. It's a decorative touch that also gives the drummer something more substantial to hold on to. The drummer will hook a thumb in the cross section to hold the drum with an open hand. An artist paints symbolic images on the native healing drum. She works freestyle. A few strokes of the brush produce a buffalo and then an entire herd. For native peoples of North America, the bison is a symbol of strength and unity. A corn maiden painting on a drum represents abundance. It's art designed to help one heal to the beat.